Drew here, and The Old Man on FX and on Hulu the next day. It is a slick little espionage thriller belonging to the old man kicks butt subgenre, and it's mainly elevated by Jeff Bridges' performance and by just the overall excellence of the production and the nuance of the writing. Uh, in a lot of ways, I think if this had come out in the 90s, it probably could have featured Jeff Bridges in the same role because I think the character feels like he should be played by someone about 20 years younger than Jeff Bridges is now. He's doing quite well for his age, but I have a hard time buying him in these action scenes uh, where he's trouncing much younger men. Uh, you know, there's this scene at the beginning of the first episode where Jeff Bridges is making uh, breakfast for himself in the kitchen with his two dogs, just preparing to have the day. And the way he was moving, it's not that he's like in poor condition or anything by any means, it's just that he moves like what he is, which is a 73-year-old man. And I have yet to meet a 73-year-old man that could beat up men that were 40 or 50 years his junior. I just haven't. That's just the laws of nature. But once you can accept that, because you want to accept it, because this is Jeff Bridges for crying out loud, and it's worth it just to have him in a role like this. Uh, he does so much to elevate this series with his um, empathetic and emotive acting that you know you're, you're willing to put that aside. It's just one of those things. But in, in a lot of ways, this feels like a 90s throwback to me. Um, it feels like one of those action movies that was just premised on uh, a compelling character and likable character, you know, taking on some kind of conspiracy. The system is out to get him. And, you know, that kind of story, it's pretty telling that it lives on the small screen as often as not now. It, this would have been a movie in the 90s, I'm sure, like a two-hour movie. And now it is a streaming series. And virtually indistinguishable in terms of the casting and the production values uh, from a movie. Uh, there have been similar movies to this in terms of action and uh, the story uh, recently, but for the most part, you have to go really big nowadays. You look at the John Wick franchise and how they have to go all out with the action to justify being on the big screen. And you look at a series like this where it's less focused on action, although there is good action and fairly plenty, you know, a fairly good amount of it, but it is so much more focused on the characterization and the story. And it is a relatively simple story, although it feels more complicated because a lot of the elements are kind of spread out all over the canvas. But when you boil it down, it's a pretty simple story. Um, but with the intricate character work and the very, very strong acting, particularly from the lead performer, Jeff Bridges, um, this is something that you feel like if it was trying to be a theater movie, it would, it would struggle to find an audience. But as a you know, show airing on FX and as a streaming series airing on Hulu, I think that it has a lot better chance of success as word of mouth can build and just the excellence of the execution can help it stand out among a crowded field. Uh, there's a, just, you know, the, so many elements here are better than other shows around it. Now, I said that it feels like a throwback. Another way to say that is it's a little bit uh, hackneyed and familiar. Um, some people will like that. Some people might get frustrated that so many of the story beats are very, very predictable. There's one story beat in particular that hasn't been revealed yet, and it seems pretty obvious to me what a certain twist is going to be. And I could be wrong, and if I am wrong, I take it back. But like, I think that there's one very obvious twist involving a certain character, and I would be very surprised if it wasn't exactly what I think it is. So the way that things go down is fairly predictable but it's done with a lot of nuance and a lot of style. And it's just the simple pleasures of this story that I think help to make it worth watching, even though it might not have anything super refreshing or new to bring to the espionage genre. Um, Jeff Bridges obviously anchors this thing, but it's also got excellent performances by John Lithgow, Amy 
Brenneman and Aliyah Shakat. Um, I have to admit, when I watched the trailer, and I realized that she's not, he's, he's not old enough to be her father, but when I watched the trailer, I thought that Amy Brenneman was playing uh, Jeff Bridges' daughter. She's not, she's actually a love interest, someone who he stays with and gradually gets drawn into his world. I haven't really talked a lot about the main story. Uh, this is based on a novel by Thomas Perry, and the novel, I think, it did do certain things better than this TV series, but in general, I would say the TV series is an improvement on the novel in most ways. The one way in which I would say that the old man, the novel, was better than the series is that the way the action scenes played out, because there wasn't this need to circumnavigate logic in order to you know, have the characters grappling hand to hand because that makes for a better TV show, that sort of thing, because of that, the way that the action scenes played out in the book was a lot more realistic, a lot more demonstrative of the intelligence of the main character, and you know, just a, required a lot less suspension of disbelief. In the show, there's a lot of Hollywood cliches, to say the least. Uh, but in other ways, I think that the book tried too hard to make the main character likable by essentially making him flawless. The series makes him a lot more damaged and vulnerable and living in the gray areas as this man who uh, has a past with the CIA and knows that it's going to come back to haunt him. They've given him a strong, uh, stronger emotional arc to, I would say, trying to decide what he wants to do. Does he want to continue to be on the run and play it safe and potentially protect his daughter? Or does he want to fight back and try to change the outcome so that he can have the life he once had. Um, there's, a, there's some really good action sequences in the first episode. I like how they gradually ease you into the story before they go into the action sequences, though. Um, there's a really, really strong musical score by uh, T-Bone Burnett, who previously they both worked on the soundtrack for Jeff Bridges' uh, film Crazy Heart, and the score here really elevates the material. The cinematography is excellent. Uh, just everything technically is executed really well. The direction um, by John Watts, obviously, who just directed one of the most popular, um, well, most successful films of all time in Spider-Man No Way Home. Uh, here he gets back to his grittier, more down-in-the-dirt roots. Uh, but the, the directing remains smooth and fluid, and it just really feels like a slick, pleasant-to-watch show. All the elements come together really well. Um, the story might seem overly simple, but it works. I think it's it's kind of elegant in its simplicity. Uh, I was going to talk about the action, and I got sidetracked, but there is some really good action scenes in this episode. There's particularly one sequence, which it was a one-shot sequence, which I don't normally like, uh, but I didn't really notice it was a one-shot sequence, so they kind of did it well enough um, that it worked for the scene. It managed to make... Uh, and it managed to make things feel more realistic and to create a greater degree of immersion. I'm a little tired of the one-shot sequence, though, overall, just because I think it's overused, and I think that it actually kind of limits the directorial decisions that can be made within a scene. But when used effectively as here, I'm a big fan of it. Uh, so, all in all, I highly recommend you give this series a shot. Um, so far, just from my perspective, I think it's about a 7.5, but I'm enjoying it, and I think if you're at all interested, you'll probably really enjoy it too. But those are just my thoughts for what they are worth. If you're interested in seeing my upcoming reviews of other shows, please consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, thanks for watching.